Right guys, welcome back. We're back with another video. Today we're taking a look at the Pixel 4 XL. And this was released last year. However, now in 2020, we're going to go through some uh, some of its features and specs and see if it's a viable option for people to buy today. Now, when I originally got this phone, I wanted to get the Oso Orange color because it was limited edition. And at the moment, you actually there's nowhere to get this color um, brand new from what I've seen, especially not from the Google store. You may be able to get it from certain places, but I'm glad I got it then because I wouldn't have got it been able to get it now. As you can see with Google, they didn't go with uh, what everyone else did back in 2019 in terms of display doing the edge to edge. They went from the Pixel 3 XL to having a huge notch on the front to the Pixel 4 XL, which having almost a full screen, but they just left the top out. Almost like when you uh, when you force this on the on the phones that have the notches, you can force it to have no notch, and that's what it kind of looks like. I actually prefer this. I don't. This is actually I don't mind it at all. I really didn't like it when they had the the big notch on the front because I just thought it looked out of place. But having it like this, it reminds me of the same same way that um, Sony used to do their phones, where they just have the main thing is having a full screen display with no cutouts. Um, getting in the way. Uh, one thing I didn't real, I didn't understand why they did is they released the Oso orange and the clearly white in matte, um, but the black version they released in a glossy, which I think personally, in my opinion, um, they would have sold a lot more of the black units had they made it a matte black, because I would have personally been um, deciding between this one and the black one, but I thought straight away I was I thought. I'm not getting that one because it's going to be a fingerprint magnet on the back, especially being a glossy surface. For the display, Google went for the 90 hertz 6.3 inch OLED display. I believe it's QHD+. One thing I do like about the display on this phone is that it's flat. Uh, Google didn't go with the drastic curves that the other manufacturers are going for, which in my opinion, I think they have no purpose. I love the fact of having a flat display. It's easier to fit screen protectors on. It's less fragile if it does fall um, and less likely to break. One thing about this display is it doesn't get super bright in sunlight, but it's enough. Um, from what I've used it, I haven't had a hard time in uh, using it in the sun, but I believe it could be brighter. Under the hood, or should I say under the screen, it's got a Snapdragon 855 comes in 64 gigabytes of storage and 128 gigabytes which is also something that i don't believe google um did properly they should have given people the option of getting a higher storage version like 256 gigabyte or a 512. um i like the fact that they start from 64 gig because some other manufacturers they go 32 gig which is too low in 2020 and 2019 it's just by the time you download a few apps it's just going to be drained. 128 gig is the sweet spot, I'd say, right now. Um, but they really should have given you the option for 256 gig as well. Uh, both models come with 6 gigabytes of RAM, which I, I can't really complain. I've been playing games on here. I've been using it as my full-time daily phone, for, like I said, for about five months. And I've experienced no slowdown. It, um, as Google does, it is best at providing you with a smooth Android experience. And as soon as I say Google, it starts listening to me down here, as you can see. I've had no hiccups with this phone. It's, it's from the day I've used it to now, it's been flawless. And I even uh, went into the settings and forced 90 hertz because I wanted it on nonstop. Now, a couple of areas of this phone that received a lot of um should i say backlash and uh controversy when it first was announced was the battery and the camera let's start with the camera so with the camera as everybody knows google opted not to go with the ultra wide angle lens instead they went with a standard 4.2 megapixel uh, wide lens and they went for a 16 megapixel telephoto lens uh, with two times optical zoom personally I'm not really fussed that they didn't go with an ultra wide angle lens. It is nice to have, 
other manufacturers do put it in there but as we all know um the main lens is always the best one having the ultra wide angle lens is never as good as the in quality as the as the main lens they put in the phone it's just it's just there as a bonus something they give you extra so i'd much rather have a good quality main lens and you can always slap on a wide angle um lens later on through like moment or other manufacturers um to get them ultra wide angle shots the telephoto i have used it a little bit combined with uh, google super res zoom it is it is pretty good i mean it does provide clear photos even when you zoom in a little bit and i mean i've got to say google the one thing they do very good is their camera software i have had no problems with this uh phone taking quality photos i'll throw some photos up here so you can see from uh, me taking this phone on different trips i've been to the photos it comes out with are just ultra crisp um and super super good quality with the inclusion of the manual exposure controls the dual exposure and live hdr it's just improved it even more it just goes to show that you might not always need you don't actually always need the best hardware um but you need a good combination of hardware and software a lot of these manufacturers now they're putting some of the best camera lenses in their phones but the the software is just lacking so much that you still can't get the best camera quality out of it and that's, that's something that google year on year um are excelling at so I can, I, i'm very excited to see what they bring with the pixel 5 maybe they even bring an ultra wide angle lens this time um but i would prefer if they bring out an ultra wide angle lens that they do it to their standard because um, that's going to be very good on the front you get your standard 8 megapixel i think so it's more than wide um front camera it provides you with a wide enough angle or view range to fit everything in the frame and it also provides you a very sharp photos thanks to google's ai photography and uh computational photography uh the back camera it caps out at 4k 30 frames per second some people have been saying that you can get it to uh 4k 60 frames per second but i haven't i haven't been able to do that if anybody knows how to do that um drop a comment down below i'd like to try it out and the battery so the battery in this phone just like the camera received a huge amount of controversy i know it received even more on the smaller model but this one the fact that it has 3700 milliamps battery when every other phone manufacturer was releasing 4000 plus people were getting worried and i don't really know what people are doing with their phones or if they've got faulty units from all the most of the uh, reviews i've seen on youtube people are complaining about the uh, the battery life saying that they they're getting very bad battery life which i've had the complete opposite every charge i've had on this phone i get a minimum five and a half six hours screen on time continuously i've never had a bad screen on time of this phone and even standby drain it's not that bad and even when it does drain a little bit the 18 watt fast charger just does uh, rapid charging and it just brings it up tops it up uh, effortlessly also i like the fact that they included the ui wireless charger which is something i think that in 2020 2019 every phone manufacturer should be doing that it's not very expensive what well, i don't think it's a very expensive thing for them to include but it does provide you with a lot of benefit if you're put into that situation where the only thing available to you is a wireless charger you can take advantage of that i'm not really understanding is the price um at the moment the price for the forex or at least from the google store is uh 829 pounds for the 64 gig and 929 pounds for the 128 gig which for that price personally I would say don't buy it because that's the same almost the same price as it was when it first got announced and i think it was uh october it was august october time um you can get it cheaper elsewhere and i have seen google do it cheaper as well so if you are looking to buy one of these keep an eye out on the google website because they are very often doing uh promos i just think at the moment this price is without any promos let me show you 
you can see on here, Pixel 4 XL, full screen, that doesn't matter, um, from 829 and a Pixel 4 from 669. However, the only two colors you can get are clearly white and just black. So it's not possible to get the oh so orange color, the one that I've got. However, if you go to Amazon, at least the UK Amazon, um, the US one may be a bit different. You can get the clearly white Pixel 4 XL for £712, which is saving you like £110. Or you can get the just black for even cheaper. That goes to £668. And it is by Google through Amazon. So you know the service will be... Um, Amazon service is always great. And if you have any problems, their returns policies are brilliant. Um, you can get the orange one, apparently. But I think this is through a third party. So this isn't sold from Amazon. This is through a third party store. But that's neither here nor there. I would highly suggest if you're thinking of getting the Pixel 4 XL in 2020 to, unless you really, 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 really need a brand new one, just buy a, buy a used second-hand one because the phone, I think it still, it still holds its own. Like I said, the camera quality, although it doesn't provide you with these numbers of megapixels and megapixels, it does what it's good at. It provides you with clear and uh, clear photos, super sharp, that are easy to take. It's just literally point and shoot, and nine times out of ten, you'll get a great shot. Pixel 4 XL didn't come with a fingerprint scanner. They've opted for the Face ID route, which I'm all for. I mean, as long as I can, you know, as long as it can save my passwords and stuff without me having to put my password in every single time, I'm happy with that. And that's why I love the fingerprint sensor so much because anytime you go into any app, you can just tap it on the back and it will log you in. Now, the Face ID, it works flawlessly. I can't, I can't fault how it works. The only thing I can say that they haven't done very well is um, the implementation for this Face ID and like apps is, is not good at all. If you compare it to Apple's implementation, their Face ID, you can use it on almost any app. With uh, Google One, imagine it's coming up almost to a year since the release of the device, and there's still so many apps that are not taking advantage of this Face ID. And because you don't have a fingerprint sensor, you have to type in your password every single time, or that's, the, that's literally the only way to log in. There is no alternative, just because the Face ID is not is not supported, which I don't know. I don't understand why they didn't just all say. Um, any application that's updated through the App Store, why didn't they didn't just force Face ID as a requirement for them to support it? It would have been much better, uh, much better used then. Now, I mean, majority of my apps, I can't even log in with the Face ID. There's a few that will let me, but otherwise I have to put in my password, and that's super annoying. That's why these phones that have the uh, fingerprint sensor in the screen is super convenient, because I can just log in and done. Along with the Face ID, you've got the Dolly Motion Sense stuff, which all I'm going to say is I've never used it and I don't plan on using it because I don't really sit there moving my hand over the screen to change a song. Some people do. I mean, I can see where it would come in handy, like if your hands are dirty or something, or you're holding something and then you just want to change it or stop it. But personally, I'm never put in that situation. So I don't really need to use it and I haven't used it. So I can't really comment on it. But in my opinion, I've used many phones over the past year. And um, I just keep coming back to this Pixel. Regardless of it not having an ultra-wide, regardless of it not having a huge battery, the complete system, the complete device, just provides you with such a good experience. I just think you can, anyone that gets here, they're going to love it. And I've used OnePlus 7 phones. I've used Samsung phones, the new ones. But I still prefer going back and using the Pixel phone. Is it still a viable option in 2020? 100% yes. Um, depending on if you can get it for a good price. If you're not so f uh, fussed about the top of the line specs, uh, but you like the Google camera, it might be worth either to get the Pixel 3a 
3A XL or even wait for the Pixel 4A which is, should be getting released soon if you do want a flagship specs and you're thinking of buying it brand new I would say for that price just wait for the Pixel 5 to come out it's not going to be that long before it's announced and then you can spend the same amount of money as you would on this one on the more up-to-date device if you're interested about listening um learning about what the Pixel 4a may have I will link it up here because I have made a video on everything we know about the Pixel 4a so it will be up here somewhere and I hope that has helped you guys out if you've got any questions um, leave it in the comments below if you like the video give me a thumbs up uh, below and subscribe for more content hopefully this helped you and i'll see you guys in the next video